Mm-hmm. Welcome back, everybody. You got Will and I, man, here from the Block Runner Metazone Roby and M Scribe, and today we're going to be talking about um, going back into history, talking about NFTs. Oh yeah, and how <laughs> they came up and why we're going to be talking about mythical games. Mm. I guess like we uh, we saw some headlines and we heard some stuff, saw some things, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and it brought us back to kind of like where it feels like where we are right now, four years ago. Like yeah. we were seeing similar things happening. The the right? stuff and things that we saw, it was like, wait a minute, this kind of looks like Top Shots. Correct. So if you don't know what that is, that's that was like the NBA's entry point to yeah. uh, NFTs. And shockingly, like, yeah, I guess even during the, especially during those times, because NFTs was nowhere near like some sort of fad or yeah anything of substance at the time. It was a micro market. Yeah, it was. Absolutely. And for whatever reason, the NBA organization marketing department whatever whatever department that made that ultimate yeah. decision we need to dabble in this space yeah it was dapper labs and the nba mm-hmm. so i guess dapper labs convinced them was like yeah we should do this and they had bought in probably like dude yeah i mean sh- we gotta look at their last quarterly report dude it was it pretty bleak so <laughs> i mean we'll take a shot at anything at this point point. Yeah. and it worked out pretty well for them they right? did yeah. they made a pretty nice little killing and it was like one of the early signals that nfts was starting to get traction yeah, I remember those days. It was a big deal because some people were just buying them out of pure, like, like they're just interested in the product, right? Because, like, yeah. dude, I yeah. like basketball. Yeah. And they were actually cool. They were, like, they were little, cool. little highlight reels of, yeah. like, your favorite players. Yeah, and it, was, it wasn't associated to any game or anything like that. It was just the highlight. That was the NFT. Correct. And they were officially licensed by the NBA. Mm-hmm. And these were NFTs on Ethereum. Yeah, and these were, like, you know, very Wait, speculative. W- was it Ethereum or Flow? I, th- I think it was Flow. It was Flow, not yeah. Ethereum. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so, so what does that have to do with mythical games? So in, in this article, they raised $37 million. I think total they've raised like 187 million Mm -hmm. in, uh, you know, all the rounds. And so what is mythical games? So mythical games is essentially NFTs for NFL, but it's not highlights. It's actual a game. Oh, this is the, you're talking about the, the game of NFL Rivals, right? NFL Myth- Rivals. Mythical Games is like the Correct. studio. It's like the Dapper Correct. Labs, right? Yes. Yeah, and so NFL Rivals takes these NFTs, and you, you're sort of playing like a pseudo Madden game on your on your, on the mobile phone. A mobile device, yeah. And uh, But you're, you're leveraging these NFT assets to play that game. So this is where we got like... Um, <laughs> We got we got an expert on the call here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> TJ is gonna have to step in here because it's been a minute since I played Madden, but apparently this yeah. is like a an existing ecosystem, right? An Where existing type of game. Yeah. Yeah. So within yeah. Madden, they have a a mode called Ultimate Team, which Ultimate Team. Uh, Madden Ultimate Team. They call it Mutt. Yeah. So in that, you can play and you can buy with real money these packs, and they open up and you get these cards, right? Mm-hmm. And okay. you put your team together, and then you go and compete in challenges and play other people online and when i saw this it looked extremely <laughs> like mutt like mirror but, pretty yeah. much but this mutt is not nft based at all no correct okay it's like a it's a if it's it's a mechanism i'm, I'm sure similar to like you know fortnite any of these like web3 yeah. no with the triple a games that exist today where they can yeah you know, facilitate micro transactions within their game with their own like game token or game coin but typically it's digital Whatever. ownership but it's off chain digital ownership it's like but it's a, not even actual ownership right because like you well know. you buy these packs right you own these packs but you own them because right you're just you on know, a database so database, you, you yeah. get to access them but at yeah. any point you know they could just yuck that yeah. shit away well from every you. every year when a new madden comes out you start all over so they actually literally take away all your assets or what? Well, I mean, you can still play them on the old game, but who wants to do that? <laughs> yeah. It's true. Okay. So it's the, the motivation there is all about the flex of the moment, right? It's like, who wants to know he's going to flex like previous season stuff. Correct. Everyone wants to participate in the new season so they can flex of being the, the best of the current season, right? Yeah. That's my hunch. Yeah. And, be, and because on uh, NFL rivals, because these are NFTs, you can, even though, <sighs> potentially the every season is going to be a new packs, right? New sets, right? Right. That you're going to have to buy in in order to continue playing. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you can trade your old assets on the open market and you know, they become speculative. Correct. So there's kind of like a trade off is like now they're kind of like promoting a, a less, uh, like a smaller market game. Right. I mm-hmm. mean, Madden is huge. Yeah. 
even though they have this whole off chain ecosystem and stuff, and you know, now they're they're introducing a new like competing platform for people to spend their time on a new right. football game, basically. Yeah. And but they're introducing this whole Web three side to it, so right. it's like. That's interesting in itself because, you know, I, I, I don't foresee a future where Madden would just like switch over to this model just because of how much money they're probably already making. Yeah. Right. But nonetheless, it's good to have this comp- competing force, right? To see. But I feel like, uh, you know, this this model, uh, if even if they were to switch over, they don't have to change their model per se. Right. Every season's a new set. But all the old NFTs are just tradable on the open market. Right. Mm-hmm. People can speculate. It's like I got the first season of Patrick Mahomes, for example. Right, but that, that's what I mean. It's kind of like two competing. I think what's going on in Madden, the 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 drive there is purely because people just like the game the of game. Madden. Yeah. And then on this other side, it's like this this NBA rivals thing or NFL and, rivals. Yeah. This isn't like a popular game. Yeah, I you're think right. People are gonna rush into this ecosystem for what you're talking about, the collectible right. sure. nature of like these are actual things that I really do own. Yeah. And I can and actually not only that, licensed by NFL too. Correct. So both the platforms have the same licensing rights, I guess. So. It seems like it. Yeah. So it's it's an interesting little comp- competition. I mean, Madden already kind of wins out the gate just because you know, it's Madden. Yeah, been around for like thirty years. Don't they come out with the same <laughs> game every single year though? <laughs> yeah, but now it's interesting, right? Now there's like a market for it and stuff. And yeah, you can. So it's kind of like a what, what's that like like a damn what, what's that thing called where people gamble by like picking players? Fantasy. Fantasy. Fan- football? It's like yeah, it's like you, they've game of they've actually incorporated <laughs> fantasy elements into uh, the game itself. Yeah, and uh, so I just collected a bunch of uh, t- Twitter links for that will be shared in the description. But uh, but uh, John Carlo, I follow this guy. He's dude, he does a lot of good analysis, and he says that there's this game that's going to go from zero to twenty five million players in a year, and it's NFL rivals. Yeah, it's very possible. <clears throat> just because, again, like uh, this can capture a lot of the Web three NFT collector base because people are in- innately interested in football. Did you know that we're more than just a YouTube channel? We also built Mscribe, the first inscription platform built from the ground up for the metaverse on Bitcoin. Connect your bitmap ordinals and use our tools to bring your community into the virtual realm. Support us by joining the movement at mscribe.io. Like, comment, and subscribe for the latest alpha. Back to the video. More so than basketball. Yeah, I think the interesting thing here is like the difference between this and Top Shots is Top Shots was like speculative highlight reels as NFTs versus this is like the actual individual player as an NFT. Yeah. But the highlight reels were still like the player, right? They, they are the player, but it's not a game, right? Correct. 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 It yeah. was just, uh, the, I mean, it was it's the, just a highlight. It was pure collector yes. as a guest, like collector ecosystem. Like I just want to buy the thing cause I like it. Yeah. And that's it. I'm hoping not even some people just buy it just to have it cause they like having sure. the ownership of it. But, in most cases, like I'm buying it because I like it, and I'm expecting, you know, someone down the line is gonna like it more than me yeah. <laughs> and yeah. offer me something more than what I paid for it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So hence market, right? No, I, yeah, I, I agree. So I, I just find it interesting that there's the game component in this. Yeah, and uh, that's true. I, I like to see like the comparisons. Like people want to speculate, or they want to speculate and play. Well, I remember back then, like, Web3 gaming wasn't even, like, a thing. You're right. It wasn't. It was... The like, only game was, like, Axie. And, and it was, like, in its God's infancy. Chain. Yeah. And they were both in, like, their infancy stages. So yeah. there was no, like, potential for any kind of game Correct. integration, really. It was tough. But these days, like, you know, gaming, Web3 gaming is becoming much more, like, materialized. Yeah. Because we, we know to build a game takes years. Yeah. Right? And so there's been years of development happening. A lot of capital injection happened last bull cycle for these types of things. And here we go. Some of these are emerging, you know? Yeah. And by the way, you, you've probably heard of mythical games before because they made a uh, Blankos. And so that was a very popular game, um, back in the early days too. Mm-hmm. It was like top shots, Blankos. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, they were in the mix this whole time. So yeah, there's a reason why these guys just secured like one of the bigger bags <laughs> yeah. of recent memory. Yeah. Uh, I think it's like 180 million or something. Yeah. Series C. It's pretty gargantuan if you think about it. Yeah. But I mean, if there's any team that deserves it, I guess it's these guys. They've stayed, they've stayed the course, you know, and they continue to uh, build these games and I guess onboard mm-hmm. you know, big partnerships here. Like this is a big deal. The NFL. Yeah. No, that's that's huge. Yeah. Um. And and so of course the CEO, uh, John Linden, it, it, dude, you're you're welcome to come on the podcast. We definitely want to talk to you just to get into the details of Bl- Blankos and NFL rivals and yeah. And I guess like the current and future status of uh, 
of Web3 gaming. Yeah, right? yeah. Because we, we have our own interpretations of Web3, like in, in Web3 gaming related to the metaverse. Mm-hmm. So I'd like to hear, you know, John's thoughts on, on that and like in its relations to just gaming itself and like how it impacts games. Mm-hmm. Web3 game design, like it has to be different. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see, like, um, again, the, the market dynamics. How is Web3 going to re-enter the conversation? Web3 gaming. Yes. Re-enter the conversation of, like, dude, what is the next thing about it? Because, you know, the reason why Axie took off is because of its, you know, play-to-earn economics. Right, right. And the whole delegate <laughs> ecosystem and all that. Yeah. So it's doubtful that's going to be the thing to, like, reinvigorate interest again. Or maybe somebody figures out a, a little bit more sustainable model there. That's true. Well, yeah, that's the point. So we don't know yet. Yeah. We definitely need some deeper insight, right, on what's what's coming ahead. Yeah. And um, all right, let's take a look at this. So this. Oh, is, I'm seeing something interesting here. Oh, yeah. So part of this is that eventually they're going to migrate to Polkadot. That's interesting. Yeah. If any of you guys are still lingering <laughs> the polka back dot from our lingers. Polkadot days. Yeah. Like we're, that was like our kind of like how our main focus these days is ordinals and Bitcoin. Yeah. A couple of years ago, it was definitely Polkadot because the oh, architecture yeah, we were going deep yeah. into Polkadot ecosystem. Yeah, like they have a very sensible architecture design to their ecos, you know, the blockchain of ecosystem of Polkadot, and we we were anticipating much greater adoption mm-hmm. would, would occur as a result. So here we go. Maybe we we're entering those days, dude. Yeah, and yeah, so definitely watch our Polkadot videos. There's a lot. We got tons of videos of that, but essentially it tries to link all these different chains together into one ecosystem as it probably should be and maybe eventually will be. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, Mythical Games getting on board there. Um, and then they have a token called Mythos. There's no market cap, but fully diluted, it's $200 million. Yeah, and I was tinkering with the NFL Rivals app. So that is going. That is like the, I wanted to see how much Web3 friction exists in mm. the user experience. Yeah. Because we hear a lot about how, like, in order for Web3 gaming to take off, you got to hide everything blockchain-related from, yeah. like, the public. So I just wanted to see, like, how, how are they handling this? So it's, it's like, half and half. You know, they, they've hidden a lot of, like, the really annoying parts. Yeah, but the stuff that they can't hide are things like... It, you actually need to buy these tokens to, yeah. like, to buy other stuff. And you have to have enough for gas. Well, they actually, like, eliminated that. Oh, they did, but, but, but it's still in the UI, though. So they could have just, like... I think they want you to know, though. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, no, because at some point, this shit's coming back on. and <laughs> So yeah. get, at least understand how it is for the moment, right? Yeah, they also have a million downloads. So a million people, you know, leveraging, poke, or I, I guess uh, whatever chain that they're currently on, I think it's um, Polygon. Mm. Um, you know, that gas fee, even though it's very cheap, a million people, that's still a lot of money. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So they definitely want you to know that they're paying for it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, um, I think that covers everything. So basically, Mythical Games, NFL Rivals, very similar to <laughs> NBA Top Shots. So what do you think, dude? Could this uh, could this happen on Ordinals? It should be happening on Ordinals. We had this conversation <laughs> earlier. It's like I know. The I want to hear your 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 takeaway thoughts. Like, dude, imagine we pitched the NFL. Is like this should this should be on Bitcoin. They'd be like, hell yes. <laughs> It should be. We're the NFL. We should be on Bitcoin. <laughs> See, and my response it. to that is like, I, I don't, I don't know, or I don't think if, cause if the retail consumer, cause that, that's largely who they're targeting here, right? For, for an application like this, it's a game, right? Yeah, who, but, who plays games? Like, well re- then why put it on blockchain in the first place then? Just to give them that again. Like, well the, then the it's action- like, Hey, we're going to put it on blockchain. It's on Bitcoin, by the way. You've heard of that, right? Well, basically, this is like the mission or the ethos of ordinals, right? We have to make such a like an impactful like presence, yeah, to where like anybody who's trying to leverage blockchain in any sense has to come to that like conclusion. It's like, dude, if I'm gonna do anything on blockchain, it's got to be done on Bitcoin. Yeah, right. Yeah, and, and ultimately, uh, there, there's when you're playing the game, there's no interaction with the blockchain mid game. Yeah, right. So it doesn't really matter where the assets lie. But if you were to pick, if you're a huge entity like the NFL, you'd probably pick the biggest chain if you could, right? If you knew that ordinals even existed. The NFL doesn't know anything about mm. ordinals. Definitely not. Right? No. So these huge institutions don't know anything yet. But if had they known, they probably would have picked ordinals and 
Yeah, I mean, you, you, you get the same experience. I mean, obviously, it's going to be a little bit more expensive, but your assets are on Bitcoin, though. Yeah, but I don't think they'd be able to cover the gas fees of uh No, of definitely ordinals. not. So, then, again, the user would be, like, uh, confronted with the friction sure. of, the, of the Bitcoin ecosystem from day one. Yeah. Right? So, I think be. that, so that's my point, right, is as beautiful and as, like, uh, as awesome as the Ordinals ecosystem is, like, f- turning into. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. watching a baby grow before it's, our eyes, right? Yeah. A very powerful one in the future. It's not mature enough to where like anything like this could be, I think in the short term, near future, I, I like brought into it, right? So potentially. Um, I mean, I could be wrong. What like, if it was on the like, Lightning like, Network? There, that's that's what I'm talking or about. Or stacks. Dude. Or fucking something else. Yeah. <laughs> um, recursion. I, I don't know, dude. <laughs> My point is the infrastructure is like so much. It's so critical at a point like this. Yeah. Right. I mean, and, and you know, you, you're trying to get one of these packs and you were confronted with blockchain terminology. Yes. I mean, and, and yeah, it probably would have been a lot cheaper rather than if it was an ordinal, but I mean, it's on Bitcoin though. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. So that's why we want to have John, <laughs> John on the call. Let's see what he has to say. Yeah. I'm curious. Just be if, like, dude, why not Bitcoin? Yeah. Like, what are you thinking? It's like, it, <laughs> When I was pitching this 18 months ago to the NFL, <laughs> exactly, there was no such thing. Right. Right. So, so yeah, um, yeah, that's it. We're going to put all the links in the description. Let us know what you think. Do you believe uh, NFL rivals going to spark the NFT train this cycle? Or mm. let us know what you think. And uh, John, always welcome. And that's it. I appreciate you guys for watching, and we'll catch you in the next video. Peace. <laughs>